Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. These short 10 minute sessions will teach you KQL, allow you to get hands on practice in a lab environment, and provide some homework to practice after the session. This is the eighth video in the KQL Intermediate series. In the last session, we covered rounding, argmax, and unions. In this session, we'll begin part one of joins. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. In the last session, we introduced unions as a way to connect two or more tables together. Unions work best when the tables being unioned have the same column structures, but it's still possible to union tables together that don't perfectly align. When we want to combine information from two or more tables together that have a common field with unique values, we can use a join. Before we dive into practical exercises, let's first talk about different types of keys. Keys are used as common fields that can tie two data sets together. The first type is a primary key. A primary key simply identifies each unique role in a table. There's generally only one primary key in a table, and the primary key does not accept null values, so each record in the table should have a unique value. Also, there should never be duplicate values in the primary key. It should be unique to each row. When relational databases are designed, they can have a parent and child table hierarchy. The parent table often has the primary key, and it serves as an anchor. Child tables have foreign keys that can tie into the primary key, so the two data sets can be effectively joined. In this example, we'll build a table for students enrolled in a school. The student ID serves as the primary key. Every student must have a unique student ID, there are no duplicate values, and there are no students without a student ID. The second type of key is a unique key. It's a lot like a primary key in a database, in that the goal is to identify unique rows. The difference is that the unique key can have null values, and there can be more than one unique key in a table. In this example, we can see that a social security number may be used as a unique key. Each person has a unique social security number. But there may be some exceptions where a foreign exchange student doesn't have a social security number and it has a null value. On the same table, it may also list the student's driver's license number. The driver's license identification number is also a unique value for each student. But some students may not have a driver's license and they may have a null value. The last type of key we want to discuss is a foreign key which is a field in a second table that ties back to the primary key in the first table. In the above examples, we have a table that has a primary key of student ID. If we have a second sales table that displays payment information, it may have a field that's simply titled ID. The primary key is on the first table, which is student ID, and the foreign key is on the second table, which is simply ID. It forms the link between the two data sets and allows us to join the information. Note that the names of the different keys may not always align. We can still join the two tables together in this scenario. Although these three types of keys are common in traditional relational databases, it's also common in KQL data sets to not have a primary key established at all. What you'll often find is a one-to-many, many-to-one, or many-to-many -many relationship between two tables. As an example, if we have a primary key, which has a student ID, and we join that to a sales table, which has all of the course payments made by students, this would be a one-to-many relationship, because the key that joins the two data sets is the student ID field. If we look at the sales table, there may be 20 records for each payment received from a customer. When you're identifying potential keys in two tables, keep these relationships in mind and they'll help you to project what the output of your query will be. At the end of the day, when joining two data sets together, we're looking for fields that have unique values that we can use to link to other data sets. Part of the challenge of joining is finding the fields in the table that can be used as a key. While it's nice if the tables include fields with the name of key in them, it might not always be that easy. Let's take a look at some data sets now and identify keys that may be used to join information. 
Let's first look in the LA demo environment. If you need access to this free data set, reference session seven of the beginner series for instructions. When we pull up the VM process table and look at the fields, we can see the process field lists process IDs. When we look at the VM bound port table, we also see a process field. It may be possible to use this as a common key if they are unique process IDs. Let's use this as an example to learn how to join these two data sets. When we envision two data sets, we should think about them as a left data set and a right data set. You can also say this is the left table and the right table. When we join these two tables, we want to place the smaller of the two tables on the left as a best practice. It's also best practice to reduce the data set to just the fields and parameters you need before the join so the query is more efficient. We'll work on efficiency in our next lesson, but for now, let's just join these two tables and see what happens. When we enter the first table in to start our query, it becomes the left table. Later, when we join it to a second table, the second table becomes the right table. This may seem confusing. Just think about the first table as you define as the left one, and the second table you define as the right one. On the next line, we'll use the pipe and type in the join command. We should place our right table in parentheses. After the parentheses, the query expects a field that will be used as a key to join the two data sets. In this case, it's easy because in both tables, the key has the same name. When the field name is the same in both tables, we can simply write it in. In some data sets, the fields may have different names. And we'll go over how to work through that scenario in future sessions. One thing to keep in mind is just like unions, joins take up a lot of processing power, and we haven't filtered the two tables at all. So let's start by only taking a sample of the data set, which includes 100 records. When we look at the results, we see that on the left, it displays all the fields on the left table. When we scroll to the right and we stop at time generated one, we can see that's the start of the second or right table. We can see that all the fields that have duplicate names are assigned a one on the rightmost table. We can see that our key field of process has a process field on the left table and a process one field on the right table. As we scroll further right, we see that fields in the right data set that are not duplicates do not have a one after them because they're unique. Now let's make a summarization that includes fields from the left and right data sets. When we sort by process, we see that each process field matches each process one field. And as we look down in alphanumeric order, we see no duplicates, and each process is unique. Let's look at some data sets now in our free Azure Data Explorer, or ADX environment. If you need instructions on how to access this free data set, reference session two of the KQL Beginner Series. Let's look at some of our tables in the Contoso Sales Database. When we sample the customer's database, right away we see one of the fields name is customer key. We can already assume that this will be a useful key to join with additional tables. When we sample the sales table and scroll to the right, we can see two keys, a customer key and a product key, which means we can likely join this data set with even more tables. What we see though is that the customer key and product keys on this table are not unique like our first data set. On this table, we have many duplicates of both since the same customer may have purchased the same product multiple times. So what would happen if we join the customer table with a sales table, understanding there are duplicates on the sales table in a one-to-many relationship? When we summarize and add fields from both tables, we can see the unique purchases for each individual and when the purchases were made. While these exercises taught us the basics of joins, this query is very resource intensive, it's not optimized, and it's one of many types of joins that are possible. In joining these two tables, we've in essence enriched all the sales records with additional customer information. Since we have all fields from both tables, we'd likely want to optimize this query so it only projects the fields we're interested in. We'll work more on that in the next session. For homework this week, use the free ADX environment. 
If you need instructions on accessing this free data set, refer to session two of the KQL Beginner Series. Use the Help Cluster and Samples database, use Storm Events as the left table, and Population Data as the right table. Join the two data sets on a common field. Reorder the fields in the final output so the state and population fields are the first two in the output data set. That's all on part one of joins. In the next session, we'll continue our focus on joins and we'll begin to optimize our joins and start to understand the different types of joins and how we'll use them. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you wanna receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell.